morning. Happy Palm Sunday. There's a party over here and hopefully there's a party over there. We just want to wish you a happy Palm Sunday this Sunday. This Sunday we focus on palms and passion. So we go from the royal entry of Jesus riding on a donkey all the way to the cross, the passion. But today is a party, and we invite you to be a part of our worship celebration. It's so good to have you all once again. You are at United Church of Hyde Park. Welcome to the party. Happy Palm Sunday. Welcome.
Sunday. We are calling all of you to worship with us this morning. We call you from your living room, your kitchen, your dining rooms, your tablets. We call you to worship and celebrate with us this morning. We begin the holiest of weeks this day, seeking to discover God in the passion and grief. Have grace on us, O oh God, as we listen for words which will sustain our weariness of the days through which we are living. We will be invited later to sit at the table where Jesus welcomes friends and followers. Have grace on us, brother of our tears, as we struggle not to turn our backs on you in these days through which we are living, but find ourselves welcome at your table of grace. As the days unfold, may we not worry so much about ourselves, but for the one who stands by us. Have grace on us, spirit of comfort, and hold us in every moment of this journey through the days in which we are living. Oh, uh -huh. 
Today, our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We will be reading from the 26th chapter of Matthew, verses 14 through 30, and ending with verse 66. Please follow. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat? the Passover. He said, go into the city of a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to have not been born. And Jesus, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take Eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of their sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of this vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. This morning, I'd like to use as a sermonic theme, missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. A little black boy on the south side of Chicago grows up in the ghetto. He is gay, but no one knows that, so he tries to pass for heterosexual. 
He knows that where he lives and where he's growing up, it's best, it's in his best interest to pass. And so he adds on extra layers of being macho man, except deep down inside, he knows his true self. One day, some of the big guys in the neighborhood bring out this other boy who cannot hide his sexuality. And they say, beat him. They do not suspect him. He does not want to beat this boy. He does not want to harm him. But he also wants to appear tough. And he wants to fit in. He wants to belong. He knows if he beats this boy, he'll gain a notch in his belt. He'll gain acceptance. He'll be seen as cool among his peers, even though he knows deep down inside he's hiding this secret. And so he takes the opportunity before him. He beats the crap out of the boy. While others are standing on the side, loads of kids cheering him on. He beats the crap out of the kid. I want to talk about missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. What a graphic way to enter and talk this morning. And I'd like to draw some parallel truths with our biblical text. Missed opportunity. There is an opportunity that comes to us. But I wonder sometimes if it's the opportunity or the door that we should walk through. You see, this opportunity fell in Judas' lap, an opportunity to give Jesus up. But the opportunity was about more than money. It's the opportunity to fit in. It's the opportunity to get in. It's the opportunity to walk through the open door. The Pharisees have been looking for someone to help them catch Jesus. In other words, Jesus' enemy base is growing by leaps and bounds. Even though there are those that believe, there are many more that are upset with Jesus. And they're looking for an open door. They're looking for an opportunity to get Jesus. Anyone could read the writing on the wall. There's tension and it's growing higher and higher. There are people that want to get rid of Jesus. And the truth of the matter is, Jesus had never really seen a whole lot in Judas anyway. Judas had never felt his love and affection, the affection that he would show other disciples like Peter and John, other disciples that he would call on special assignments. And like most of us, we can tell when someone doesn't really like us. Let's keep it real. Even when they put a smile on their face, we can kind of tell when people Hmm, maybe they ain't feeling us. They're not drinking our cup of tea. He had often wondered, why did Jesus even pick him anyway? You know, Judas felt left out, and he felt it even on that evening. He felt Jesus taking the punch at him, implying that he would be disloyal. He couldn't know it then, that this opportunity to fit in would be a further fall from grace. Some in the predestination camp, those who believe that our whole lives are already chosen, would say that he was born to fail. Yeah, he gave Jesus up, but how could it be betrayal when they were never really friends? Yeah, he allowed jealousy into his heart, all right. He wouldn't be the first. And yeah, he might have been messed up. And yeah, he might have made the decision for all the wrong reasons. But more than hurting Jesus on that day, he hurt himself. Because he knew even then, after he betrayed Jesus, so they say, so the news media reported, he knew even then that he still didn't fit in with the boys. He could never be a part of the religious group. And when that reality hit Judas, he would never make a comeback. Judas is not the only one to miss the opportunity. The gay black boy in the ghetto is not the only one to miss the opportunity. The biblical story continues, and if 
I can just pick your memory. There would be other disciples, too, that would deny Jesus. As Jesus' popularity rating plummeted, he probably could be compared a little bit with R. Kelly. Nobody who was anybody wanted anything to do with Jesus. They even in the end would put two criminals by his side. Even Peter was like, I don't know the man. I'm just saying. I'm just, I, Je, who, Je, who, Jesus? I don't know him. Nope, 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 I never met him. I think if we could look further, Judas and the disciples are not the only one who have missed an opportunity. Maybe you've missed some opportunities in your life. We are right here in the throes of a pandemic. Some of us have already lost someone we know. Some of us know someone who has lost somebody they know. Some of us know people right now that are fighting for their life. And maybe even some of us have been tested positive. Maybe even some of us are hiding that we've tested positive or hiding that we're afraid that we've tested positive. We're struggling right now, we're scared, and we already know when people are scared, they don't do the right things often. Some folks still won't stay at home in spite of the Mayor Laura Lightfoot memes that are going out. They still won't keep their butt at home. We're in a prime spot to miss the opportunity because fear has made our vision like Judas myopic. Anytime taking an opportunity calls us to deny the truth of who we are, the truth of who others are, the truth of what others mean to us, or even more so a missed opportunity to deny the truth of who God is, that's an opportunity we want to miss. We've made a faulty choice. We have fallen. Judas has fallen. And he would realize later that what appeared to be an opportunity was really a missed opportunity. Some opportunities we would say, no thank you, I pass. Some opportunities we should just walk on by. No matter how bling bling they look, no matter how wonderful they look because they prey on our weakness and not our potential. A while back, I saw a runner do a phenomenal thing. When I went looking for the runner, I was surprised to find out that there were several runners who had done this odd behavior. That, by that, I mean that this person was headed to a finish line. The runner is in the race, and we know when runners run, the purpose of the race is to come out in number one. The runner is in the race, and there are two people that are plowing toward the finish line. And they're not far. They're turning the curve, the last curve, to go into the finish line. And one of them falls over in pain. Now clearly, the second runner now has the opportunity to take hold and to win. What was peculiar to me was right there was the opportunity to be number one, and this runner stops. They stop running the race to work with the other person to see if they're okay and to help them to the finish line. Now, I was amazed when I saw this the first time, but when I went and looked for this person and found that it had been done over and over again, isn't that what it's all about? Instead of the myopic vision of just trying to win the race all for ourselves, that immediate and concrete goal, some re re runners, when they were put in a situation, saw a bigger and a broader and a greater opportunity that extends beyond their own benefit. Don't miss the opportunity to do something that extends beyond what benefits you. 
A family gets invited to a wedding. This couple has three kids. Their youngest kid is seven, and their oldest kid is 17 years old. The oldest had a dramatic gig that we, she performed in plays, and she did the theatrical performance of her life, letting her parents know she couldn't go with them this weekend. She was responsible, she was mature. Would they please let her stay at home? Because of her theatrical performance, her mother thought, my daughter has been mature, and she decided to let her 17-year-old stay at home. The rest of the family packed up the two other kids, her husband and her, and they went off to the wedding. They returned later back Sunday night, and Monday, things appeared to be normal. The kids went off to school. The mom was cleaning the basement. She recognized that half the basement was clean, but the other half of the basement was a little bit junky. She started picking up stuff, and she came across a letter in the trash can. And in the letter, it indicated all the things that her daughter had moved and all the things she should put back and where she should put them back. Well, the mom put two and two together and realized that her daughter had had a party while they were away at the wedding. She thought about confiding to her daughter, but before she could ever go to her daughter, her daughter came home distraught because that party led to drunken behavior, it led to her messing up at her gig, and it led to her being kicked out of the National Honor Society. So the daughter says, I get a chance to appeal this case, Mom. And they say, I can bring one character, <laughs> character witness. And the daughter turns to her mom and says, I'd like that to be you. And the mom is like, you want me. <laughs> to be your character witness right now. And the mom really wasn't feeling it, this whole opportunity to be a character witness for her daughter who had had a party in her house. She almost missed the opportunity. But then she decides, well, after all, if I hadn't allowed her to stay at home in the first place, maybe none of this would have happened. And so she goes before the board of teachers and principal, and she pleads on her daughter's behalf. And she stands by her daughter in a not stellar moment. In the face of her daughter's poor decisions, in the face of the school looking down on her and deciding she doesn't deserve to be a part of the National Honor Society, this mom testifies about how incredibly amazing and talented and smart her daughter is. Sometimes we can miss the opportunity that extends beyond us. Sometimes we can miss the opportunity to stand by people when they most need us. People don't need us when we're up. They need us when they're down. People don't need us when everything is going good. They need us when they experience real loss. I mean, I love to kick it with my friends, but this week, one of my friends lost her husband. And as much as we have fun going out and hanging out, she really, she really needs a friend. <laughs> People don't need us when the crowds are around. They need us when the crowds are not there. People don't need us when their reputation is intact and good. They need us when their reputation is on the line. People don't need us when they're riding in on donkeys. They need us when they're being strummed up and trumped up on false charges of death. And sometimes when it really counts, we miss the opportunity because it requires something more of us. It requires us to see beyond our myopic vision. It requires us to stand by others. And it requires us to admit our own vulnerabilities. I'm doing the Netflix thing too. Some of you all are too. Netflix ratings have definitely gone up. But I got to learn about another awesome person, Colin Weaver, who was convicted of a murder crime in the 1980, in 1980. 
The police used bad evidence to convict him of a crime that they allegedly said he committed. And for 20 years, Colin was locked up in jail. Colin had only been in the United States for a couple of years. He had come from the Caribbean. He didn't have money. He didn't have good representation. But he got in trouble with the law enforcement. They locked him up in jail. He did awful in jail. And for 20 years, Colin insisted that he was innocent. For 20 years, he came up on parole, and they would allow him out on parole if he would just admit he did it. Colin kept saying, I did not commit this crime. Colin had a friend, Carl. And with the exception of Carl, mostly friends faded away. But Carl was like, I know my friend did not commit this murder. And so for 20 years, Carl fought for Colin. And if it had not been for Carl, Colin would still be in jail, lawyer after lawyer, begging, looking for opportunity. Carl fought for his friend. People don't need us when they're up, but they sure need us when they're down. They need us when they've heard that they're COVID-19 positive. They need us when they're on the margins. They need us when their reputation is on the line. I remembered a song by Carol King this week, and it sounds so appropriate now. When you're down and troubled, and you need a helping hand, and nothing, nothing is going right, close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You guys know this song. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call, and I'll be there. I'll be there. You've got a friend. In these coming months, may we not miss the opportunity because fear has our heart. So many times in our own history, when fear is on the rise, when we don't know, we do some crazy things. And can I say off the record, even though I'm on the record, that Americans have been real jerks at times. And we've missed the opportunity to rise. May we not this year, and in this season of a pandemic that has not even begun to narrow out. May we not miss the opportunity to be our whole selves, even at the risk of being judged. May we not miss the opportunity to stand by others, even when things don't look so good or great in the world. May we not miss the opportunity to stand by others and declare we believe in the goodness of their humanity, even when they're on trial and convicted, even when they get the death penalty. And may we not miss the opportunity to stand by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even when others want to hang him up to die. Yeah, we love the party. We love the palms, but then there comes the passion. There comes that time to not miss the opportunity to stand. From palms to passion, things can change real quickly. And usually we use our imagination, but this year we don't have to use our imagination because from March the 5th to April the 5th, a lot has happened. And we've gone from palms to passion. We've gone from being free to roam the earth to really stay your blessed assurance at home. Let us not miss the opportunity to stand by the marginalized. Let us not miss the opportunity to stand against those who are most discriminated against. Let us not miss the opportunity to stand by people who are not popular by the world's standards. Because we as spiritual beings do not live by the world's standards. 
May we not miss the opportunity to be character witnesses. I know that man. I know Jesus for myself. May we not miss the opportunity to stick by others for the long haul. I believed him then and I believe him now. And may we continue to testify to the light has come into the world even in these bleakest and darkest moments. As Judas looked for the opportunity, the text tells us he looked for an opportunity. As, Jesus, as Judas looked for an opportunity, may we also look for opportunities around us to plant our feet just like Jesus by those who need us most. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call, and I'll be there. You've got a friend. Amen. Morning United. It is offering time and we are making a special, special invitation for you to share your resources. It is still ever important that pastoral care presence is given.
that we still provide care for <clears throat> all of our members and all of our friends. I want to say thank you, first of all, to all of you who have been consistent and faithful with your pledges and your time. Um, I want to say thank you to all who have come by the church, who have mailed in, and we're even seeing a little bit more activity on our electronic giving. Especially want to say thank you to a special visitor, and you know who you are, um, that gave a special offering this week. It's that kind of giving that is just a wonderful opportunity for you, but a wonderful opportunity for us. We are united, and in these times, sometimes we have to challenge ourselves to remember that we are united. There are three ways that you can give, and we don't want you to wait till we're back up open because we don't know how long people are gonna have to stay at home, and we still need to continue to receive financial resources. You can mail it in, if you're on one of those walks out day doing your social distancing, making sure you're staying a certain amount of feet from everyone else, we have a drop box at our church and we will receive if you wanna just do that great power walk and drop it off. But you also can give electronically as well. There are three ways, ways you can share your resources and we invite you to continue to share your resources. And we wanna say a special thanks to all of you in these last four weeks as we've been live that have shared your resources. We thank you, thank you. We cannot be united, we cannot do united. We cannot be the church without your resources. So thank you, thank you so much. We invite you to share. We're gonna have some music so you can take a time to write that check or to get on the electronics and try to share or to even just pray about, Lord, what would you have me to give? We invite you to share your financial resources.
who opens the gates of justice be with you. May God continually shine down upon us. Let us empty ourselves of pride and power. And may God continue to fill our hearts with humility. Let us continue to sing the songs of Zion. May you bless these seeds that we have planted to be your light and your love in the world. Amen. I invite you all to the table. If you were here, I'd say come closer. Even in your homes, I'd say come closer. If you're distracted, come closer. Make sure you have your root beer or your grape juice or whatever it is you're bringing to this space today. We are sharing a space and I am trusting and believing that you are sitting and you're looking in and you have your elements that symbolize Jesus' body and Jesus' life with you. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. So God sent Jesus to us. Not in power and wealth, but as one who was simply a teacher of steadfast love and failing hope. With those who put down their hearts in welcome, with those who clutch doubts behind their backs, we join in the songs of praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord, stonemason of salvation. All creation joins in recognizing this moment of praise. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in peace and joy and glory for us. Blessed is the one who invites us to this table. Setting aside privilege and power, holy God, your child, our brother, chose to be made in our image so we might see you face to face. He could have bossed us around, telling us what to do, but chose to teach us compassion because that was what was in his heart. He could have turned his back on us and kept his earbuds lodged in tight, but chose to listen to our stories, to listen to our hearts breaking. He could have hardened his face in judgment of our foolish, missed opportunities, but turned it towards what awaited him, in that place where people would reject him, friends would betray and deny him. The powers would condemn him, and the death would claim victory over him until you, O oh Lord, raised him to resurrection life. As we seek to follow in the coming days, as we remember all he said and did this holy week, we proclaim that mystery we call Jesus died while suffering for others. Jesus was raised, exalted by God for his faithfulness. Jesus will come so we once again can cry. Blessed is the one who comes in peace and glory. Here at this table, we come together once a month. all over the world, we are invited to this table because of Jesus' life, because of all of Jesus' journey. And we do this in remembrance of him. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, Judas was there, Peter was there, John, and all the other disciples were gathered around. And 
And at a table, at a feast, at a supper, they share these things as we share with one another today in our homes, but united. And Jesus took the bread and broke it. Yeah, this is my body. Broken for you. This is my new covenant poured out for you. Don't forget me. Do this in remembrance of me. So I invite you at this time. We thank you, Lord, for this table that you call us to. We thank you for this life that you call us to. We are ready. Amen. This is the time in our service where we ask for your joys and your concerns. I've talked to some of you over the weekend. We continue to pray for some of the same things I've heard from some of you that now you've learned of loved ones or learned of people. Um, that you know that are struggling with COVID-19. The numbers continue to grow up um, at an incredible rate. <laughs> Things are happening so fast all around us. The news is bombarding us. Some of us have people we know that have died that are no longer on this journey with us. And I don't know how much we can continue to process it all, but we lift up the burdens that we bring to this space. We lift up our concern and our worry. And we say, come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayers. I also want to say that I know that there probably are still joys that we glimpse. Um, and we celebrate those as well. Some people have had birthdays. It's an interesting time to have a birthday, but it's still some people's birthday, and we celebrate the birthdays that happened on this past week. People who have turned one year older, happy birthday. And for all the ways that we can see God's blessings, even in the bleakest of moment, we celebrate that at this moment. Come, Holy Spirit. It is our tradition that after we have lifted up joys and concerns, you can speak those from your home. You can continue to send them in that we pray a unified prayer in which Jesus taught the disciples and how appropriate it is for us today to say that prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom done, thy kingdom done, come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. We celebrate the passion and we celebrate the palm and we wish you a happy Palm Sunday. At this time we ask for you to join with us in the closing hymn. Before we close today, we want to wish you again a happy Palm Sunday. We want to remind you that here at United, we're doing a project where we're trying to get people to sing This Little Light of Mine. We have seven people, but we are trying to get up to 10 before we uh, release our debut musical project. And we would like to release it on this week. So we're looking for three more people. All you have to do is record yourself this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna, you know the song. We need three more people to do that for us. We'd love to have you to do that. If you're looking for companionship or just want a place to check in, remember on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. we gather on Zoom for comedy, for jokes, to check in and to share our prayers with one another. We'd love to have more of you join us on, we on Wednesday. This is a holy week. And we travel in many ways from Jesus' birth to Jesus' death. Meet us here next Sunday as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Easter, we are looking forward to having an awesome celebration. We thank you for joining us here today. Let us have our closing prayer. Now, we will walk out with our palms, rejoicing, but we won't miss that opportunity to go and serve at God's side in a broken and fearful world. We will follow wherever Jesus leads to learn from those the world ignores, to be touched by the grace within them. Now we will sing songs of wonder. You've got a friend, you've got a friend. And until we meet again, we will work alongside the Spirit, sustaining the weary with peace and hope. In Jesus' name, amen.